and actually, you know, when I'm invited to speak to some other church or another place and or organization, you know, I just uh, just like you do, you ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to preach? Do you want me to preach the same thing that I preached here and there, or you want me to start a new thing and stuff? But some reason, and it was very crystal clear, that God gave me very clear message that I want you to speak these words. So, and I believe some of you, maybe all of you as a church, or even, it's a two, two layer as an individual, you know, you've got to be ready, not just involved with your mind, thinking that what's the point, what's the logic and sort of things, you know, that's good. Get involved with your mind, but also you've got to involve with your spirit. That what is the rhema would have gone? Something that God has for me. This is different from Bible study, that your heart and your uh, spirit to be ready. What is the a rhema would have gone for today and for my life. Amen? You ready? Alright, so so can I just open with prayer? Is it okay? Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this amazing opportunity for us to get together, especially for me. And it's been 10 years that how you have given me that privilege to uh, uh, meet with those uh, uh, precious people and we, I Taught the word of God and they carried on and now they have grown and thank you Lord for the amazing hand of God and the grace of God that's been uh, very evident with this church and uh, this afternoon and I believe you have given me the message that you want me to share with this body of Christ and I pray that uh, I won't be a hindrance but I'll be a, a clear channel clear conduit of the word of God to each and every one of us who are here, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, I would like to actually invite, you know, especially Pastor June and uh, some of the leaders, and uh, to our 50th uh, year Jubilee. You know, you guys had a 10 year Jubilee, you know, just the anniversary. I think we are at the 50th year, uh, Golden Jubilee. That's on the 26th of November, you know, uh, this year. So that's about four weeks' time. So we would like to have a special seat because in my heart, you know, it's like a daughter church or sister church and however you, you know, see it. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a tremendous uh, a privilege that, you know, some of the uh, representation from the um, life, life expression to be there and witness that the 50 year and uh, so uh, I just want to give you an open invitation for the catering purpose and the seating and, uh, and sort of things so that if you can just uh, let me know through Pastor June and I uh, will uh, 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 reserve the one section just for you guys All right all right, so let's get into the Word of God. So I already mentioned that I had very clear message for your church and uh, for the people, and that is very clear. I'm, I'm not going to just uh, start with the riddle or anything. And it's, uh, that is this. Don't look back. Do not look back. Okay? And that is the, that is the, the message for you and I, uh, you and me also. Okay? And uh, so, for anybody to have a, a sense of direction, you know, like how many of you sometimes feel like you're stuck in some place and you try to move somewhere, but like, uh, you, you're, have you been in a mud that is so sinking down to a knee deep? You know, in New Zealand, some place, you know, you would just assume that everything is sandy days and sort of things. And, uh, you know, not too long ago, myself and my son, Jed, and uh, we were sort of launching a small boat and thinking that it's the, uh, uh, that will be a bit of a, a depth in the water. But end up, you know what happened? It was mud everywhere. I didn't know that it's, uh, you know, Oakland Harbor, some part is just so muddy that your uh, feet goes you need it. And then we cannot be up on our boat and uh, the sort of things that uh, my little son and I, we will just try to carry that heavy thing with all this equipment and things. 
and uh, there's something in me, it's like, uh, should I just give up on this boat and just run away? And it, it was just long away, right? But I want to encourage you, maybe some of you in your life, whatever is going on, and you may feel like I am stuck in this same old place, and just, you know, like, just to pull one leg out of the mud is just so much of consuming of your energy, right? If you're walking under, you know, just the grass or walking under concrete and it's just so easy, you know, you don't even think about, you know, moving your leg. But when you are in this mud, when you are in the deep, you know, the trouble, just pulling one leg is, requires so much energy and, and next day, you know, end of the story, we, we pull ourselves out with the boat and everything. But the thing is that it wasn't just my leg muscle, soul, whole body, because I was using every, you know, strength of every muscle of my body to, to pull myself out and carrying the boat and the kids and all that sort of thing. Usually my son complains for every little thing, Daddy, this is too heavy, Daddy, this is that, this is that. But I saw him that the supernatural side of little Jen. Because uh, it was kind of his idea, Dad, what do we go out? What do we do this? You know, somewhat venturing sort of thing. So, okay. And, uh, you know, that, that moment I saw him, that just he was carrying incredible load. And he wasn't complaining. Like, wow. You know? And uh, I want to tell you that we are at times that we feel like I'm stuck in some area. But I have a message for you. Don't stay in that mud. The water is coming in and it's not going to be a good news. You need to get out of there. You know, sometimes you stop, you feel like when this thing's going to change, it's too far this way, it's too far also that way. And I don't know, I'm, I feel like I'm stuck. I'm not just here alone, but also I got this boat to look after, I got another person to look after, but I have a message for you. By staying in the same place, sitting down, you know, feeling sad about the situation, sad about you, is not an option. Amen? Amen? I have a message for you, and you and your church, you know, my brothers and sisters, you got to move forward. You've got to press yourself forward. Okay? And that I want to share. So, what happens when we look back? What's, what's behind us? You know, there are times that we... It, 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 what happens, human memory is that the, when you are having difficulty in your present time, what do you usually do? Especially when you are at night, things are not going well, perhaps it's your marital relationship, perhaps it's your a place at work, you know, why did I ever come to New Zealand? You know, how great, you know, the life in Korea, how great life in America, how great life in, in the Philippines, or whatever, wherever you came from, and I want to encourage you that uh, don't look back and thinking that all oh, good old days. Human memory has a funny thing that uh, as we getting more older and older, we actually lamenticize of our past. We, our human memory is very selective that we try to remember all oh, those good old days. You know, those were the best days of New Zealand. And some of the people have that sort of sentiment toward the uh, future of the uh, country, future of individuals. But with God, you know, a thing are not dead, gloom and doom and bad in your future. Human memory, you look back thinking that, oh, that was a good day. And here's a, a scripture that described what was like our real uh, past. You know, I'll just quickly read uh, some of the a portion. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it says, And you uh, uh, he made alive, and who were dead in trespasses and sins. What was our history? Spiritual history? What was in our past? We were all, everybody says, you were dead. In God's side. You were dead, and I was dead. We were dead in trespasses and sins in which you were walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Uh, of the air. Who is the prince of the power of the air? Who, who is that? Who is the prince of darkness? And that's Satan. 
we used, whether you knew it or not, we used to follow that guy, that a person. Okay, and we follow, and according to verse 3, is that the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the uh, flesh and, uh, and of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath, God's wrath, and just as the others. And that was our past, okay? So there's a reason why you left the old days. There's a reason why you become Christians. The true conviction of the Holy Spirit is that the first thing is the conviction of the sin and conviction of righteousness and conviction of judgment. So you come to believe that I am a sinner before God. And how do I get rid of this? How do I be right with God? The Spirit of the Lord convicts us that Jesus died so we can be righteous. Amen? So that's what happened. That's our past. And what about our present? What is happening Right now, is that the verse 4 is about God who is rich in mercy because of His great love. There's no other motivation but the amazing love of God in which He loved us and even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. And you were dead, but now you are alive in Christ. Amen? You gotta know how, no matter how you feel at this moment, you feel like I'm in the mud. I cannot pull my leg. I cannot move forward. I'm stuck in this relationship. Perhaps I'm stuck in this financial death and I'm stuck in this spiritual, whatever turmoil that you may be in. But I'm telling you the spiritual reality. If you are in Christ, raise your hand if you are truly in Christ. You believe in Jesus and you have confessed that Jesus is the Lord. You have, uh, Ask Jesus to come into your life. I am telling you the spiritual reality. You are so alive in Christ. Amen? Your heart, your emotion may say otherwise, but I'm telling you that this is the spiritual reality. This is where we are. So not even a, a, a comparison. In the past, without the Christ, you were very much dead. All we were waiting for is at the wrath of God. But now... What is happening? We are made alive and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In the ages to come that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You know what, whatever you sing, how many of you feel like I have been blessed by God after I received Jesus Christ into my life? How many of you genuinely can testify that Ever since I asked Jesus to come into my life, my life has improved. Who can say that I, you know, my life has been improved? You know what? I have, I have a message for you. You ain't seen nothing yet. True riches of God is actually all preserved. Yes, we can access, you know, prematurely. We can access the blessing of God, riches of God, before its proper time, you know. The kingdom is on its way, coming, but I am telling you, Apostle Paul is saying that the, in the age to come, there's a still the reality of this blessing of God is ahead of us, not in behind us. And we need to press forward until you uh, and I, we receive that. Okay? And it is His will to give us the riches of His grace. Okay, and here's the thing. This arrow represents uh, the life, history. It's not like the Buddhists, you know, s- you know going through the same circle or whatever other uh, worldview. There's a different belief system and etc. But this is, think of it as a, a beginning. And uh, this is the history of God. What happened? In the beginning, God created everything. From nothing to everything. So how... The atheists can explain that. Well, just somehow something came out of nothing. And they call it, they are the scientists. But Bible makes it very clear. In the beginning, God. And He created everything. So creation took place. And then we know the story. We have fallen away from the command of God. So the uh, consequence of death and uh, destruction uh, sort of things came and we saw and then what was the uh, hand of God? God wiped out the first 
age, first era. The people, whatever the uh, different people they used to live, they're all gone, except Noah's and his, you know, eight members. And the flood came. Then what happened? God picked one man, the man of obedience, man of faith. His name was Abraham. And what was his promise to Abraham? God promised. You know, I, in you, Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Not just you and your family, but the, all the tribes of all humanity will be blessed through you and your descendant. So he received the Abrahamic covenant. God made an absolute promise that this shall happen. So did it come to pass? Yes. Abraham and out of that Isaac and Jacob and Israel came forth. And what happened after that? The king, amazing king named David. And uh, what happened? God confirmed with David. David Because of your obedience, because of who you are, what's going to happen? In your line, there's going to be always throne. And in your line, there's going to be a Messiah will appear. And he will save the world. Now basically, Abrahamic, you know, covenant going through the uh, Davidic uh, covenant. Then the promised Messiah, he did come. When? 2,000 years ago. Whether you feel like I'm stuck in somewhere in the mud, I cannot move, I cannot go anywhere, guess what? Hand of God. God's history is moving forward, never going backward. Okay? And what happened? 2,000 years ago, Jesus came, He made a way for anyone, whoever believes in Him, shall not perish. Not like the people in the uh, Noah's time in the flood, whoever connects themselves with this Messiah, Redeemer, Jesus, what would happen? You will have a way to the Father. Okay? You will be full citizen of God. You will be full adopted sons and daughters of God. That's what Jesus, you know, His mission. He came. He accomplished the mission. And then what happened? Day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit poured upon 120 people in the upper room. What happened? They were filled with the power of God and they become a church body of Christ, and they spread the message to the uh, north, to the uh, south, and east, to the west, and all, all the face of the earth. They get to hear one at a time, and uh, a nation after nation, the word of God has been preached. Guess what? The mission of Christ Jesus, preach the good news to the ends of the earth, it is happening. Sometimes you feel like it's slow. Oh, when that ever happened. Do you know that in just within few years time, and we are getting really close to the uh, translation of all the existing human language, and they're going to have Bible in their own tongue, in their own letters. This is remarkable thing. Without the translation of the Bible, it is difficult and hard to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Guess what? Within uh, either this year or next year, and just based on what uh, calculation and stuff. But now the, all the languages, you know, is actually conquered by the message of Jesus Christ. And we are getting very close to the new age. We're not talking about weird new age. We are talking about the age to come, Apostle Paul talked about. Then when the mission is accomplished, and what's going to happen? Our Lord, uh, our husband, spirit, uh, 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 Jesus Christ will return. And he will start his rule on the earth. Amen? And we are living in the very end. It's a no time to muck around. We've we got no time to just being, being, being foolish. Okay? And um, here's some of the people that I want you to actually think about. Have you heard of, uh, what are these people, you know, what are they in common? Have you heard about name, Terra? Well, I mean, it's already there. It's just, uh, he's a father of Abraham. Did you know, and if you read Book of Acts, whose idea to leave the uh, a place called Ur in order to go to the land of Canaan? It wasn't the idea of uh, Abraham. Actually, it was Terah's idea. Terah, Abraham's father, he wanted to go all the way 
to today's Israel. I don't know where he got that inspiration, where he got it, but he went and somewhere in the middle called Haran, that happens to be the same name as his first son who died. Okay, And that's where he settled. He never pushed forward. He didn't go all the way to Canaan. So Terah, he stopped at the city of Haran. And what about the wife of Lot? Remember the Lot, the guy, nephew of uh, Abraham, who was staying in Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angels of the Lord appeared to them, warned them, this city will be burned. Get out of here as soon as possible. Right? What happened to the wife of Lot? She was so uh, concerned about the things. I don't know what she was concerned. Maybe her uh, nice bag, nice car, nice clothes, or the skirts, or the new shoes. I don't know. That she was uh, looking back. Because that was the uh, uh, instruction, do not look back. You cannot look back. There's no time to waste. Just move forward. And uh, what about the Israelites in the desert? What happened? They all came out of Egypt, from the Egypt, going to promised land. Somehow they thought they will just jump straight into uh, promised land from Egypt. But what was the reality? When they crossed the Red Sea, where was it? The place of nothingness. It's the uh, barren place. It's a wilderness. They had to press forward, go through the uh, uh, desert and make it all the way to promised land. But then when things get tough, what was their chanting? What was their self-talk? What were they talking? They complained against Moses. What did they complain? We hate this sand. We don't like this food. Same old, same old food. Manna, manna burger, manna waffle, manna this and manna that. And I am sick of this angelic food or whatever the mysterious food. We miss what? We miss fish. We miss onion. We miss leek, garlic, and all of those things. They were missing their time as a slaves. You know, it's a lesson for us. What would happen? Let's be logical. Okay? Their emotion crying out, oh, let's go back to Egypt. Let's be real. What would actually happen? They actually come up with the democratic, you know, just the process and voting for someone instead of Moses. They got their leader. Let's go back. You know, that was the good old days. Let's go back. They go to Egypt. What would happen for them? What is waiting? Remember what happened in Egypt for them to leave? Pharaoh will just kill them right at the spot. Because of these Israelites and their God, they lost all their firstborn son. And they're not going to uh, welcome them uh, with the banner. And, but they are not thinking straight because of this, this current sin, this wilderness is hard. Oh, I want to be anywhere else but here. Sometimes you may feel like that. But I have a message for you. Your destiny is not going backward. You and I, we are in a train that is moving only forward. You know, even in your uh, a train, you may feel, oh, bad, up and down, but know for sure that hand of God, schedule of God is only moving forward. Only way to going backward is that you jump out of the train. But then that's a suicide. That, that, that is not an option. And you know some people. How many of you know someone who used to be some sort of church leader? How many of you know somebody who used to uh, be a strong Christian, at least on the outside? You know, I know many people, they said, you know, so-and-so led me to the Lord, and then they just, you know, uh, become atheists or become whatever uh, sort of thing. And I have known so many people who used to be in the ministry, preaching, Leading so many people to the Lord, and yet later on in their later part of their life, they got nothing to do with Christ. You and I shouldn't be of that, these sort of people. Because the Bible warns us, you know, Hebrews chapter 10, about our destiny. For in just a little while, and he who is coming will come, 
and will not delay. This is the warning from the Lord and this is the clear message. God will not delay just for you. It's like, you know, a train will not wait for a customer. Train will leave on right on time and train will arrive at the scheduled time. Christ Jesus will return. It's the problem is that the whether you're going to be ready, you know, all packed up and ready to get into the train or not. And we need to understand. In verse 38, it says, But my righteous one will lead by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who will shrink back. You know what this author of the book of Hebrew is particularly pointing out? These are the people who were in the wilderness, first generation of wilderness, slave generation. What, what did they want? They wanted to? Go back. Or some of them, they say, I wish we were dead in this wilderness. I have a message for you, some of you. Be careful what you wish for. You know what happened? All of them, they died. None of them saw the promised land. Except for the one, Caleb and Joshua, who have faith. We can totally do this. Going back is not an option. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to look back. And some of you need to install the Spirit in you. I don't know what happened, to be honest. What happened in 10 years? Some of the high moments and low moments and all the ups and downs. Every ministry has all of those ups and downs. And I want to tell you, don't try to go back to whatever the good old days. Okay, you know what? If it is a truly good old days and truly good and you would have stayed the same, but it's gone. I want to tell you that those days are gone. Glory days gone. Whatever the struggling days gone, it is not an option for you to live in the past. Some of you, as an individual, listen what God has for you. Don't stay in the past. Because past is past. And what you and I need to face is today. What you and I need to see is forward. There's an age to come. And there's the amazing thing is waiting for us in eternity. And we cannot waste time thinking of, oh, good old days. Feeling melancholy and feeling, you know, just a little bit sad. Oh, I'm getting old. What am I doing in New Zealand? Why my wife is this way? My husband is this way? My kids, they used to be little cute and things. And they're not listening to me anymore. They're teenagers and they're this and they're that. Let's not look back. And uh, here's a, one more scripture of Apostle Paul. In Philippians chapter 3, it's, uh, verse 12, it said, And he's saying this, that um, not that I have uh, already obtained or am already perfected, but I, everybody says, press on. He says that I haven't finished my race. You know, but things getting hard. But this is one thing I do. When you are in the mud, what do you do? Press on. Because the water is coming in. Because you got a, a boat to look after. You got a sun to look after. When you're both of your feet in the deep in the uh, mud, you know, barely you can just uh, move yourself. But you cannot afford to just sit down and, oh, what happened? What did I, what did You have to actually get out of there. You have to press forward, not backward. Okay? So Apostle Paul, he is just crying out of his soul. In verse 13, Brethren, I do not count myself to have uh, apprehended. I do not count myself that I had grabbed it. But one thing I do, he is focusing, he's emphasizing this. The one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And this is the message for you as a church and as an individual. Forget the things that is in the behind. In Apostle Paul, he had an amazing ministry, amazing things, great miracles and great uh, breakthroughs. But you know what? That was the miracle of yesterday. Do not dwell in the yesterday glory. You need to press forward. Because you and I cannot just waste time thinking of, oh, what about this and what about that? We have to press forward. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. So 
when church, one of the signs of church getting weak and dying is that the church began uh, more like uh, nostalgic. Oh, those days and those and going back and thinking back. You know what? We need to invest in our little children. They are the future of this church. You know, a church. You gotta pray for the little children. You gotta, uh, get the best people who can teach the little children. You gotta train them. You gotta train your youth right. What happened? Because we think of the future. We press forward. We press forward. Forward momentum. Verse 14. I press toward the goal, which, uh, for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that is the thing that you and I really need to move into. Here's the thing, you know, I have uh, some of the background in the counseling area. So I have counseled uh, many different people, many Christians and Christian leaders. And one of the things I noticed, uh, have you know uh, that um, one of the uh, number one factor in the United States, you know, for divorce, is actually Facebook. Did you know? Facebook leads so many couples in, into divorce. You know the usual. You know how that usual story goes. You know every. Is there any couple that? Oh, we never had any argument. You know we are both angels. Uh, we never had any argument. We never fought. We never raised our voice, and we had a, such a lovely thing. And we don't know what it. What you're talking about? Please raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> Let's be honest. Every relationship, every journey, and there's a difficulty. And but what happens is that the, when people find it that there's a stalemate, there's no more communication flow. You know what do you do in your heart? Remember when you feel like you're stuck in a some place in your relationship and things. What happened? Satan make everything look beautiful in your past. Oh, I wonder. Late at night, you cannot sleep. You're so upset. Late at night. You got your iPad, or more discreet, your phone, Facebook. I wonder, where's my high school sweetheart? Oh, you know that these days, you know, this communication, it gives you this all this signal. Oh, I wonder why he's still awake this time, you know, whatever the state he's in. Oh, just, just you know, like one of those things, should I say hey? Hello? Yeah, that wouldn't hurt. So you say, hello. And then, you know, you didn't expect him to just uh, send the message straight back. And it's like, hi. Oh, we haven't talked for ages. Yes, yes. And uh, how's it going? How's the weather? How's this? And how's your things? And then one thing led to another. That they don't usually share their deepest struggle in the first chatting. You know, that goes, you know, you have an expectation now. That, oh, how are things going? So now you share more of your day, more of your thought, what's going on with that guy or with that girl than your wife or husband. Can you see where it goes? And then and you feel like this person understand me. Oh, those days, you know, when I made foolish things and she accept me so much. And I'm telling you, many Christian people, even some of the elders and the people, and they gone into that track. Later on, realizing that they meeting them offline. One thing led to another and complete sort of a, a, a destruction of the family. Why is that? Why is that happening? Because we romanticize about old days, thinking that, oh, you know, what have I done? She was the right one. He was the right one. What was I thinking? You know, I didn't know that he would be a billionaire. <laughs> I never knew that he would be that good. You know, I thought my husband, when he was in high school, he was so handsome, but now, ugh, what happened to him? But that guy, he looked like, a, you know, just a skinny guy, you know, nothing much to look at. Did he become a bodybuilder? What happened to him? You know, it's just all those things. But I'm telling you, do not look back because they're a number one factor. When you are low, everybody have a tendency to move back, thinking back, going back to the good old days. I'm telling you that good old days, true good old days for the believers, it is ahead of you. That is the age to come. 
you know, it is it not even comparable for what kind of riches of glory that God has stored for you. So this is a race that we cannot just slack it off. You have to press on. Even the great man, Apostle Paul, he said, this is one thing I do, forgetting everything past in the glory and difficult and hard times. And I do one thing, which is I press on. You speak to somebody next to you. You brother, you sister, you press on. And here's, there's a one mile race. The 1954, there's a the, the, uh, race of the century. That the English guy, and uh, his name was uh, Roger Venister, and the uh, Aussie guy, John Landy. And they were rival. And there was one of those, you know, televised uh, sports events, and the uh, whole world was taking interest. And uh, actually, one of the, uh, uh, the, they were such a rival, and uh, they, the Roger Randy, he was an uh, Aussie guy, he was already running. You know, you can, you can watch YouTube. He was, you know, whole race for the one mile race for the Commonwealth game, and he was a leader, he was leading. And then something came into his head. You know what there was? His rival. Where is John Bannister? Is he close? Uh, Roger Bannister, where is he? And uh, this is the actually famous moment. He wanted to check his rival. Where was he? So he was actually looking at the wrong way. He's, you know, Roger was coming this way, actually passing him. But he was checking his rival this way. This is the interview. He said, where is Vanister? As he turned to look, Vanister took the lead. Landy later told a Time magazine reporter, if I hadn't looked back, I would have won that historic race. That you and I, we are in a race. Our uh, audience is only one. That's Lord Jesus Christ. He's standing up. He's so ready to give you the crown of glory. Whatever the fa- uh, uh, pace that you are running. And this is the uh, uh, departing word. And Apostle Paul, do you not know that those who run in a race like Olympic game, Commonwealth game, you are running. All run. Every believer, you are running. Whether you like it or not, whether you feel like it or not, you are in a race. You are running. But only one receives the prize. Run in a such a way that you may obtain it. What does that mean, that run in a such a way that you obtain it? Is that a, like a casual walk race? No, you do your very best. You know, like a, this race horse, they put a blinder. Why? Because a horse not to be distracted by this side Seen, they're only focusing on the goal. And um, and everyone who competes for the prize is uh, uh, temperate in all things. And now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. And therefore I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight and not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection the lest when I have preached to others this is the word of Apostle Paul I have led so many people to salvation I led so many people to Christ Jesus but if I look back if I actually let myself go in the very last moment what would happen I myself should become disqualified can you imagine that you've been the number one runner you, there's no rival. You are running so well, but you are distracted. Oh, what about other church? Oh, what about that guy? What about the guy who left a few years ago? How did they? What about this? How they are? You know, whatever the distraction, not from the Lord, that that will take us down. And uh, uh, more so that if we don't, if we are not careful, and this is the time that so many people actually uh, uh, running off the track. And I've met uh, amazing uh, ministers before in person, got to talk to them. And then they were uh, like running a race amazingly. And later on, they joined with the 
Oprah Winfrey, they join with some sort of teaching and things that uh, there's no such a thing as hell. God is God of love. God will send everyone to heaven anyway and something. What happened to that guy that I met many years ago? You know? But we cannot afford to get sidetracked. Amen? So I want to just have a time of ministry right now. I want you to close your eyes. You know, I have spoken many things, but the one message is very clear. You cannot, and I cannot afford to look back and distract it. It is only the illusion that the Satan is creating. You had a beautiful past. Something went wrong in the past. It is irreparable. So uh, you should go back. You know, that is not an option. You and I, we need to look forward, move forward. Church, life expression, I want to encourage you to move forward. And I want to just ask you, anyone who would like to just uh, uh, indicate your decision, your resolution in your heart. God, many things happen in my life. Some good and some not so good. But I'm in the mud. I feel like my leg is not, uh, sinking down. I cannot just uh, pull my one leg after another. But I decide not to stay in the same place. I'm going to press myself forward. Because that's the only way of salvation. That's the only way to move forward. All right? So just, uh, just uh, let me just uh, ask you to stand up in your place. That if, I want to pray for you uh, as a, a messenger who has this simple message. God has put it in my heart that you cannot go back. Move forward. Move forward. Okay? Don't look back. Please stand up, and I want to pray for you. That anyone who senses that the Holy Spirit is saying that uh, whatever it's your uh, situation, God is saying, you need to move forward. Don't look back. The past is gone. Let the past go. But think of the things that God has for you in your future. Amen? So just, uh, just uh, quietly stand up. That if you like to just uh, receive that prayer, if you like to indicate to the Lord that I want to move forward. To listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that uh, you need to let go of the past, move forward. If, uh, if it is something in your heart that you would like to do that, and uh, just quietly just uh, stand up, I'd like to uh, pray for you. I am not here to embarrass you, and you don't have to stand up. If it is not the Spirit of the Lord, it doesn't mean anything to me, but I have this sense that the God has given me that... Uh, you need to draw some line. This is the line. You've got to line, uh, uh, make a line on the sand and saying that, you know what? I am going to actually take a one step forward from day forward today. You know, my past is gone, and I'm going to actually make a forward momentum, forward movement. And uh, I'm going to just uh, support you. I'm going to be there with you. That's all. I'm not going to drag you along, and I'm going to ask one last time. That anyone who says that the God is giving you a new beginning, that the, uh, let go of the past, you will focus on the future and uh, the crown of glory, what God has for, uh, 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 for you in the future. Father God, I thank you, Lord, and I pray for uh, my brothers who are uh, standing up, uh, indicating that they want the things of God in their uh, future not in their past. And Lord, I pray that the Lord, you will be with them and you will be strengthening their heart, that they would not look back thinking that this is, that was the better days. No, that is not the better days. Better days are ahead of us. And Lord, I pray that uh, also for this church, life expression. And uh, this is your word, that there's a truly better days ahead of you, not in your past. So don't give up. Press on. Move forward forward. God will be with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.